The title of my sermon today is Drama Main for the Storm. Um, you know I got to start out by asking this question. How many people here have ever suffered from motion sickness? Yes, yet, yeah, right? Is that not the worst thing ever? I mean, maybe you one time, God forbid, have gotten car sick. I know I was car sick all the time when I was little, or maybe, you know, you've gotten seasick. Whatever it is, you know, if you've ever felt that, then you know the three word secret to travel. <laughs> Take your drama mean. And now for those of you who don't know, Dramamine is this, basically this little over-the-counter drug you can buy it at CVS, and it prevents motion sickness. There is a really intricate, wonderful explanation of how it works. I can't give it to you. Um, I just know you take it, you feel better. And it keeps you from feeling that awful sense of like dizziness, that instability, and so on. Um, and it's the so on you want to avoid. Last month um, on our trip that we have told, told, you, told you about, Toby and I spent some time on a boat in the Arctic Ocean. And most of the journey was actually near shore, sheltered by some outer islands and in fairly calm waters, right? But then one night the boat moved into open water into big open water. And since we knew that there was a chance that this might happen, Toby and I employed the three word travel mantra, take your drama main, and we were good. We were just finishing dinner when it hit. One moment it was totally, ah, smooth sailing, then wham, huge rocking waves. The boat was like, People's faces were like, especially the ones that hadn't taken the drama. I mean, the horizon was not even steady. You had to hold on to things in the boat because you couldn't really even walk. I mean, it only lasted a couple of hours, which were the longest three hours of their lives for the people that didn't take the drama. I mean, um, but eventually we retreated into calmer waters. And just as quickly as that rocking hit, the calm, the stabilization happened. It was at that point I looked at Toby and said, oh, that's a sermon right there. Such a great sermon. Because, <laughs> I mean, tell me, right? This just preaches itself. I mean, one minute in life, things are just, ah, smooth sailing. And then wham! Out of nowhere, things become unstable and unpredictable. I mean, I know nobody knows anything about that. I mean, think about just something, something as simple as the crazy weather we've been having, right, for the past couple of years. I mean, who knows why it's happening? There's no such thing as global warming. But, you know, I don't know. Whatever's going on, ah, it's 70 degrees and beautiful. And then wham, it's 30 and it's sleeting. <laughs> Our unpredictable weather actually reminds me of something that a gentleman in Scotland told us. I mean, Scotland being a place known for its unpredictable weather. He said, oh, alas, we don't look at the weather forecast in Scotland. We look at the book of revelations. <laughs> <laughs> yes, life is full of that, ah, wham, formula. I mean, think about people especially the people in your life. I mean, people can change on a dime, right? I mean, maybe it's an illness that comes out of nowhere, or maybe it's a personality change that you didn't expect. There are traumas and crises that alter people. And then there are the people that are just inherently unsafe and unpredictable all the time. Amen? Amen. Of course, I think our world is probably the best example of the ah, wham formula. The attack on Moscow this week, Israel and Gaza, the war on Ukraine, shifting allegiances, unexpected attacks, surprise violence, election polls that change daily, people turning on a dime. There's no stable 
horizon. Just like 2,000 years ago, when Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem. Our scripture that Gloria read for, for us tells us this wonderful story of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. People were lining the streets, waving palm fronds, welcoming him as the Messiah. You know, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Ah, oh, smooth sailing. And then wham! Just days later, this crowd, this same crowd is yelling, crucify him, crucify him. Friends, as tragic as this story is, as hard as it is to hear, it represents the exact nature of the world in which we live. Whether it's 2,000 years ago or it's today, right now, life is one long experience of, ah, oh, Wham! That's the deal. End the story. It's not going to change ever. Amen. I hope you found my sermon uplifting today. Our last hymn will be... <laughs> no, honey, I'm not going to leave you hanging like that. I mean, we may all be stuck in a ah, wham kind of world, but there is a way to live in this unstable place. There is a way to protect our balance, to guard our grounding, and to keep a steady head. It's all about finding drama mean for the storm. Spiritual drama mean, that is. And Jesus shows us where to find it. I mean, we all know the passion story that's about to unfold this week. And I'm just going to march forward a little bit and talk about piece of this. You know, and we know that Jesus, after today, goes on teaching. Many of his lessons fall between now and Good Friday. The religious leaders keep pressing him, pressing him tighter and tighter, questioning him, doubting him, challenging him. The Roman leaders are getting more and more nervous with Jesus and his followers and the power that they seem to represent. Finally, at the apex of this instability, Jesus takes his disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane and, according to the Bible, asks them to do two simple things. Pray and keep watch. That's it. Pray and keep watch. That, friends, is the ultimate spiritual drama main right there. It's the thing that will keep us steady in the storm. Pray and keep watch. In fact, it's so important that I'm framing our entire Holy Week message around it. Today we are talking about prayer, and at Easter we're talking about keeping watch. So today let's look at prayer. Think about Jesus facing this unstable future, yet he prayed all night in Gethsemane. I mean, let's, let's look at the scripture. Uh, let's see. Where is this? Uh... Mark 14, yes, Mark 14, 35. And going a little farther, Jesus threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus handed the storm to God and found grounding in that place. The disciples, however, provide an example of what happens when you don't take your spiritual drama mean. Jesus begs them to pray with him. And three different times, Jesus finds them not praying, but asleep. And what happened? In Jesus' greatest time of need, the disciples denied him made up stories, got paid off for betrayal and treachery and hid in shame. The disciples didn't take their spiritual drama mean and the storm took them down. I mean, you just can't overestimate the power of prayer to keep us steady. 
It's like that wonderful song that Alex and Richard just sang, that peace, pray, pray, pray till I see your smiling face. I'm going to pray, pray to the one I love. You know, I was reading a piece on prayer recently that had this wonderful kind of explanation about a tradition of the ancient Christian theologians. When greeting each other, they would lead with this question. How is your prayer? Not, how you doing? How's the family? Where'd you get that suit? No. How is your prayer? I mean, prayer to them was the ultimate sign of a spiritual life. And they called it like the breath of the spirit. I mean, think about it like this. If the body has breath, it lives. If breathing stops, life comes to an end. So it is with the spirit. If there is prayer, the soul is alive. Without prayer, there is no soul life. Bottom line, as your prayer life goes, so goes everything else. I like how our global family member and Broadway producer Paul Lambert once described prayer to me. He said, kind of laughing, he goes, you know, every day and every night we have the opportunity to ring the doorbell of the most powerful force in the universe. We can just go chat with God anytime. Why in the world would we not just sit ourselves down and stay a while? <laughs> Love that. I mean, prayer is what brings us stability in the storm. I mean, like drama mean, it wraps us in this protective bubble that helps us function, even thrive in the most unpredictable and rocky of circumstances. But also, like drama mean, you have to actually take it for it to work. You have to pray. You have to lean into the exercise of prayer. I mean, consider one of the greatest examples of that Dr. Martin Luther King. I mean, for him, prayer was not a hobby. It was not something you put on the to-do list that you fit in during lunch. It was not an app. It was not reserved to 11 on Sundays or when he needed it. Prayer was organic to how he lived. You know, there's a story about an evening in 1956 when Dr. King had received a phone call from a white supremacist who threatened Dr. King's life, his home, and his family. And in that horrendous, unsettling storm, the first thing Dr. King did was pray. And he prayed these words. Lord, I am here taking a stand for what I believe. But now, I am afraid. The people are looking to me for leadership, and if I stand before them without strength or courage, they too will falter. I am at the end of my powers. I have nothing left. I've come to the point where I can't face it alone. It was a raw prayer. It was a real prayer. It was an honest prayer, and it worked. Because in the midst of that terrifying instability, Dr. King marched on steady and strong for years to come. I want to show you an image that says more than I could ever describe in a sermon. Travis, would you show us this photograph? Yeah. This is nine years later. 1965, Dr. King marching in the, uh, the march from Selma to Montgomery. This photo was taken during one of the rockiest, unstable, volatile times in our nation. And look at him. Look how, look where he is. He just stands rock solid in the midst of that violence. Friends, these these aren't just inspirational stories. They are roadmaps for what is possible. This is about undaunted courage. This is about resolve and tenacity and determination. This is about standing tall and firm in forces that are undulating all around us. This is about what is possible. For as Jesus said, with God, all things are possible. Yeah, life is one long experience of, ah, wham. That's the deal. End of story, and it's not going to change ever. 
But none of that matters if we have spiritual drama mean to keep us steady in the storm. For if we have prayer, we have God. And if we've got God, we've got everything. And then those storms just become portals to something greater. As we heard in our call to worship from Sir Francis Drake, stir us, O Lord, to dare more boldly to venture on wider seas where storms will show thy majesty, where in losing sight of the land we shall find the stars. In the name of him who pushed back the horizons of our hope and invite the brave to follow. And the people said, Amen. Amen.